Hi everybody, this is Lori from Cut and Paste Craft Studio. Uh, today I'm doing a short live video to give some instructions on how to do our parent-child panels. Uh, these are actually wooden panels that have the design etched into them. Bring one up closer to you. You can see that design is etched into the wood. These are two 8 by 10 panels. You get to choose either the unicorn or the dinosaur set. These were meant to be a class that would have been happening right now at the shop if we could still be open. And uh, parents and kids would work together on these panels. But because we have two designs and that makes four different panels, I'm not going to be able to paint along with you today. So what I'm going to do is just go over um, some tips about how you're actually going to paint this. Um, it's pretty easy. It's called paint by line because you're painting by following the lines. Hi Beatrice! I'm so glad you're ready. Um, I always recommend doing my background colors first. You're going to be using a set, your set of brushes. Um, for wide open spaces, I always recommend the wider brush. If you need to get into a little more details, you can move to this smaller brush. They both have a nice flat edge for doing straight lines. Or you can move on to uh, the pointed brush if you're getting into little tiny details. Now, as I said, I'm not going to be painting along with you. So I'm just going to have you watch this. And then you can get to painting. Um, children can paint both of the panels if they want. They can paint with a parent if they like. Um, the, the difference sometimes between painting on canvas and painting on wood is you will often need a second coat of paint for certain colors. Um, that light sky blue that is the background for both our unicorns and our dinosaurs, that often takes two coats. I recommend painting the first coat and then either moving on to your other colors or getting your blow dryer out. That's what I usually do is just blow dry everything. Um, and then you can really move on to any color you want next. Sometimes I recommend uh, doing the white because again, white takes more than one coat. Um, don't put your second coat on until you're sure that the first coat is dry. The problem is if you try to paint over paint that's already wet, it just mushes it around. So you really want to let it get good and dry, either moving on to other colors or blow drying. Um, to do that. The yellow in particular will take several coats. Um, what I want to do though if right now is talk to you a little bit about some of the special details here. I mean you can follow the lines and paint it any way you want. If you're doing the unicorn you can mix up that mane and do it in any colors you want, you know any any order for the colors. Um, with my dinosaurs over here. Um, you could switch the colors around a little bit if you want to. Um, if you guys are up for it, you can even mix some of your paints. But I do want to go over a couple of the special details that we did. And I'm going to go in a little closer here on this um, unicorn. The technique I'm talking about is something you'll do after you've painted all of your design and you're going to use this pointy brush. Um, you want to try to keep the point nice and um, pointy and you also don't want to use a lot of paint. And what I'm going to show you right now is the little bits of details that I did to accent the main. Um, let's see if I can get a little bit closer here and still hold everything. Can you see on the main those little bits of white? Let's see if I can hold steady. I don't want to get you all nauseated <laughs> by moving around too much. You start with your brush with the tiniest, tiniest bit of white, okay? You don't want a whole lot. And then I'm going to come in here right here and add a little more white. You're just going to barely touch it and just do a little bit like that and just Maybe I'll go into her ear a little bit, like that. Just add a little. You don't want heavy amounts of paint, all right? And you can do that. I wouldn't outline the whole mane. I would just add little bits of the paint um, just to kind of accent it there. 
um, if you wanted to, if you wanted your stars to shine a little bit, you could add some little of white, you know, to give a little shine to your stars like that. It's hard for me to paint and hold this camera at the same time, so I apologize if it doesn't look its best. Um, but those are the little details that I recommend. Um, if you have your marker, um, you can do this very last. We used a, a paint marker on that, or you could use black paint and your tiny brush. That might be a good way to practice your tiny brush skills. Um, that's how we did all these. It's, it's pretty simple and then add those little bits. Um, now I know Beatrice will add all sorts of things to this that I haven't shown because <laughs> she she gets very creative with it and I encourage you guys to get super creative with this too. Um, now I'm gonna switch over to my um, dinosaur here. And I think I'm gonna switch places because the, the unicorns are closer to my window. This way you can see a little bit better. Um, the light is a little bit brighter on this um, over here. Let me turn that one just a tiny bit. There we go. He may get a little bit more light. Um, then um, with the, with the um, uh, dinosaurs here, I did a few things that are sort of like the, the little white accenting that we did, but we did it with a technique we call dry brush. And there are different ways you can do that. I'm going to show you um, one of the dry brush techniques we did. And um, that was with the darker paints that are um, down here. The little, can you see? Let me see if I can get in good and close for you. See the little accenting? I was trying to give the feeling of some plants growing up behind them. And the way I did that was I got some of the darker green that you have in your paint. I dipped just the touch of my brush into that. So I have just a little bit. And then believe it or not, I took off. So brush off your brush so that you just have a tiny amount of paint left like that. And then instead of brushing, we're gonna pounce. We're gonna go like this. Pounce, 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 pounce. All right, and you can keep adding it to it. If you want, you can go back and get more paint, but always remember to wipe off because you don't want to end up with a big smash of color right there. All right, so that's one technique we can do. Um, another technique is what you may see up here on um, the cloud. And that was with uh, some of the blue. I took my medium-sized brush. I dipped it into my paint just a little bit and then I did the same thing. I wiped it off. So I just have a small amount on there. And then we aren't going to pounce on this cloud. We're going to brush, but we're going to brush with this tiny amount of paint and we're going to follow the curves of our cloud. Well, now I took too much of my paint off. That may happen. It's okay to take too much off. You can always go back on. And don't mash down on this. You're going to go light, light, light. And just add a little bit of blue highlight um, or purple highlight or whatever you like to the top of that cloud. So that's one technique. I'm going to wash up my brush now. Remember, between colors, it's important to always wash and dry that brush. And when you are done for the day, get that brush as clean as you can and dry it up because you want to keep this brush for the next thing that you cut. Now, I gave my mountains just a little bit of highlighting. I think I used this one here with the brown. That same brown that you've got down there on your dirt under the dinosaur. And again, got it on my brush, wiped it off. And then I kind of gave my mountains a little contouring. I just wanted to, you know, because mountains aren't solid blue. They're dirt up there. And we just kind of did it like that. Then, and I'm not going to wait, but you will want to wait until that is dry or you can blow dry it. And I will go back in with my white. Same thing. I loaded white paint onto my brush, but then I wiped it off. And then I decided I was going to 
add just a little touch of snow up there. And if you get, if you see the first little bit, you've got too much paint on your brush. You can just wipe it off with your paper towel. All right. I am not a pro at holding the camera <laughs> and painting at the same time. Um, but that's how we did it. Now, uh, one other technique I want to show you right here. Um, I found it hard to paint that tiny little dot on his face. So what I did was I used the wrong end of my paintbrush, dipped it into the red paint. That gave me a nice big blob. And I just kind of tapped it around there and kind of went around it in circles and maybe added a little more until I got enough of what I want. Um, for you on this one, uh, remember to use your paintbrush when you're doing things like the little dots there. You could even switch to the wrong end of your paintbrush if you want to add, you know, the little dots there. That might give you a little more control. Um, use the little tiny brush on his toenails. And then you can use the little tiny brush to outline. We use that. If you've got a black marker, you could use the black marker there. Or if you want to, you can use um, the blue that we did in there. And just use your tiniest brush to outline it like that. So that is all there really is to this. This is you guys working together. Um, because like I said, I can't paint four canvases at one, four panels at one time. And I wasn't sure my husband and both my children really wanted to get in on this. So now if you cuss here live and you're like, well, I don't have those panels at home. I am going to add them to the shop today. So, uh, because I have three I think, left of each of these designs, and what you'll get for the uh, panels is you'll get both. You'll either get both of the um, dinosaurs or both of the unicorns, and we'll give you all your paint, and I'll put a button there so you can add a brush, too, if you need to. Um, and then you can come back here on Facebook. We'll save this to Facebook, or I will upload this to YouTube. I think it's a little easier to go back and find things on YouTube because, you know, you don't have to scroll all the way through all that stuff I put up on Facebook. But let me, as I finish, say a huge thank you to everyone. You guys are really making this work fun pace. I don't know what we would have done if it wasn't for all of you signing up. And again, thanks so much, everybody, and enjoy your panel painting. Um, I will be on Facebook for a while if you need to ask questions or type 